hopefully you guys can hear me, but I forgot my, um, my recording gear back at the, the hostel. But I did make it to, to uh, Tokyo now. So we're, we're in Tokyo, we're gonna be hanging out here for about three or so days. I think we're three nights, so about four days in total. And then we're going down to Kyoto and do some exploring down there. Sorry about the background noise. I know the audio right now is really shitty. But um, the next audio will be better. Um, but yeah, we're down here checking out some gardens and stuff. And then um, after Tokyo, we're gonna go to Kyoto. And after Kyoto, we're going back to Tokyo and do some more exploring. But yeah, if you guys wanna see you know, some of the videos and stuff, definitely subscribe like and comment if you got any suggestions um, yeah definitely let me know and then if there's stuff that you want me to do in Japan I will be coming back for sure I think I might move out here for a year or two uh, later on so we'll see anyway guys peace out NSD and the whole of Western thought is profoundly influenced through and through and through by the idea that all Things, all events, all people, all mountains, all stars, all flowers, all uh, grasshoppers, all worms, everything are artifacts. They have been made. And it is therefore natural for a Western child to say to its mother, how was I made? That would be quite an unnatural question for a Chinese child because the Chinese do not think of nature as something made. They look upon it as something that grows and the two processes are quite different. When you make something, you put it together, you assemble parts or you carve an image out of wood or stone working from the outside to the inside. But when you watch something grow, it works in an entirely different way. It doesn't assemble parts. It expands from within and gradually complicates itself, expanding outwards like a bud blossoming, like a seed turning into a plant. But behind our whole thought in the West is the idea that the world is an artifact that it is put together by a celestial architect, carpenter and artist who therefore knows how it was done. When I was a little boy and I asked many questions which my mother couldn't answer, she used to resort in desperation to saying, my dear, there are some things that we are not meant to know. And I said, well, will we ever find out? And she said, yes, when we die and we go to heaven, uh, it will all be made clear. And I used to think that on wet afternoons in heaven, we would all sit around the throne of grace and say to the Lord God, now just why did you do it this way? And how did you manage it that? And he would explain it and make it all very clear. All questions would be answered. Because as we have popularly, in popular theology, understood the Lord God, he is the mastermind who knows everything. And if you ask the Lord God exactly how high is Mount Whitney, nearest millimeter, he would know exactly like that and would tell you. Any question, the Cosmic Encyclopedia Britannica. Unfortunately, this particular image or myth became too much for Western man because it was oppressive <coughs> to feel that you are known through and through and watched all the time by an infinitely just judge. I have a friend, a very enlightened woman, she's a Catholic convert, but a very enlightened Catholic, and in her bathroom she has on the the pipe that connects the tank with the toilet seat, a little framed picture of an eye. And underneath in Gothic letters is written, Thou God seest me. 
Everywhere is this eye watching, 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 and judging you. So that you always feel you're never really by yourself. But the old gentleman is observing you and writing notes in his black book. And this became too much for the West. It became oppressive. They had to get rid of it. And so instead, we got another myth. The myth of the purely mechanical. 